The warmest of welcomes to you wherever and whenever you are watching this film of our Light Up A Life event. How I wish that we were welcoming you in person, that we could be together to sing, to listen and to love. Of course we are together, we're together in our hearts and our minds as we share the memories of those we love and remember the joy that we have had from knowing them. Thank you for joining in this special event and thank you to everyone who's contributed in any way to make this possible. Let's be together, share in our memories and find comfort and joy. It has been our very great privilege to have supported Arthrank Hospice for many years now. The families who rely on it, the patients they care for and the wonderful team of staff and volunteers who work here and make this place so special. 2020 has been a year that in living history for many of us has been like no other. And if ever we needed a lesson in the values of this amazing place, kindness, compassion and care, then this year has given it to us in spades. And we hope that coming together to remember and reflect will allow you to remember someone close to you who may not be with you this Christmas, but remember them in your heart, in your mind, with comfort and with love. As we gather this evening, between us will be a wide variety of feelings and emotions, whatever they are, be they fearful or joyful, regretful or thankful, I hope that this evening will be of some comfort to you and of help to you. On the front of the commemorative booklet that hopefully you have, we are reminded of the words of Robert Ingersoll, an American writer and free thinker, who spoke of the hope to see the calm beyond the storm, the dawn beyond the night. My hope and prayer for all watching Light Up A Life is that as we glimpse that dawning light, that we will make some steps from darkness to light. Sing choirs are going to sing to us an arrangement of a song which will be familiar to some of you called Wings, originally sung by Birdie. In the song she sings, the lights go down. Tonight that will happen, but then the lights come up. Each light on the tree representing those who are no longer with us that we've come to remember this evening. So as we begin, we listen to Wings performed and arranged by Sing Choirs.
Now, Barry Morgan, who leads our community specialist nursing team, is going to read to you a poem called When Love Is by Tom Gordon. When love is rich, let me not be impoverished by its passing. When love is bright, let me not be overwhelmed by the darkness of its going. When love is joy, let me not be cast down by my sadness. When love is full, let me not be broken by my emptiness. When love is life, let me not be destroyed by dying. When love is God, let me not be rejected by my doubting. When love is good, let me not lose faith in love's own goodness. When love is you, let me not lose love in your departing. When love is me, let me not lose hope for my living. That poem reminds us of the massive adjustment it is when someone we love dies and how the challenge is to somehow find a way to live on without losing faith or love or hope. Right now, we stop to remember those loved ones who have had such a profound effect upon us, but are no longer with us. After the lights on the tree have come up, let's pause for a minute and take some time for quiet reflection and thanksgiving for those whom we are remembering today. We give thanks for each of our loved ones represented by light and remembered here today, and for every treasured memory of them, for the ways in which their lives have touched ours, and for all that we were able to give them. For the difficult as well as the good times, for their courage in sickness, and for all that they have given to us. In our sadness, with great thanksgiving, we remember them, and for all who mourn, May they find comfort, hope and peace. The next poem is called Message to a Heavy Heart by William Baldwin, which reminds us of the coming light in the darkness. The darkness that engulfs us all casts the soul in deep despair and the weary heart that cries finds no release from that dark hall. From the depths of darkest woe, a cry goes forth, release, release. We who in our sad repose feel naught but bitterness and pain. Yet in the distance shines a light that though afar brings hope to those whose lives are filled with heavy grief and hearts who seek love's sweet release then this sure light burns nearer bright, casting out the evil dark. For he is the one the Father sent to brighten every trembling heart. So hearten ye who seek release, your captivity is at an end, for love will fill your very heart and love's undying comfort bring. Oh, thank you, our brightest light, for giving hope and grace to know 
that even in our darkest hour, we are the children of the light. My name is Stephen Conway, I'm the Bishop of Ely, and I'm speaking to you from uh, Ely Cathedral. And I pray that we may, as we light up many lives today, we try and see that in the darkness there is light. And that is the light we pray to surround our loved ones and ourselves, united in one love. For we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we unite our prayers as we join together in saying the prayer which uh, Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now Alex, one of our chaplaincy volunteers, is going to read To Love Justice by Robert Ingersoll. 
to love justice, to long for the right, to love mercy, to pity the suffering, to assist the weak, to forget wrongs and remember benefits, to love the truth, to be sincere, to utter honest words, to love liberty, to wage relentless war against slavery in all its forms, to love wife or husband and child and friend, to make a happy home, to love the beautiful in art, in nature, to cultivate the mind, to be familiar with the mighty thoughts that genius has expressed, the noble deeds of all the world, to cultivate courage and cheerfulness, to make others happy, to fill life with the splendour of generous acts, the warmth of loving words, to discard error, to destroy prejudice, to receive new truths with gladness, to cultivate hope, to see the calm beyond the storm, the dawn beyond the night, to do the best that can be done and then to be resigned. This is the religion of reason, the creed of science. This satisfies the brain and the heart. Before Bishop Stephen closes with a final word, I'm going to read a short poem, which I hope encourages us to look forward and to live out each day, to hold on to our good and happy memories and the love we have received so that we might in turn be bringers of the light to others in the future. Do not be dismayed by Elar Nost. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world all things break and all things can be mended not with time as they say but with intention so go love intentionally extravagantly unconditionally the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you say not in grief that they are no more but say in thankfulness that they were. Death is not the extinguishing of a light, but the putting out of the lamp because the dawn has come. May God enfold you with love, fill you with peace, and lead you in hope to the end of your days. As we go our separate ways, let us commit ourselves to life, as I invite you to say with me, let us go into the world Glad that we have loved, free to mourn for those we have lost, free to hold each other in our human frailty, and empowered to live life to the full. Go in peace and hope and love. <laughs>